Okay, so now I'm testing OBS um, by drawing in Inkscape, okay? So here's where Inkscape is quite strong, actually, for doing things like character design. Um, very quick to sort of pound together a character concept. Actually, it looks like my materials, my default materials, are somewhat transparent. Not sure why, but let's go ahead and make this probably something like that. Well, I want that to be more diffuse, or uh, I guess muted might be a good term to use. Okay, so um, Control D for duplicate. I could actually duplicate that again, go like this. If I want to give it um, a don't like that color. There we go. Let's make this really big. Okay, by the way, it appears I've got some snapping options turned on that I really would prefer not to be turned on, but I'm not going to fight with that at the moment. What I'm going to do is just demonstrate how um, if you want to create characters quickly. In Inkscape, this is one way to do it. Okay. Okay. Again, probably a more muted color would be better. I'm not going to mess with the guy's hair at this point. But what I am going to do is I'm going to save this as a SVG file. Um, I guess for my purposes right now, I'm going to make this uh, example.svg. And then I'm also going to export it as a ping. So we'll call this example.ping. Okay. So export that. So now I have it as both an, an image with an alpha channel and also as an SVG file. So, okay, so why did I create this video? Well, in a previous video on Blender, I commented on um, some of the difficulties of OpenTunes. It was just a passing comment, but I thought, you know, actually there is one thing about OpenTunes that's quite cool, and it relates to this matter of working with SVG files. Um, you can, I should say, you can actually create um, characters and, you know, do your art in OpenTunes uh, the same way I just did in Inkscape where you use the, the you hit the G key for the geometric tool and what I do is I, I use polyline and then at that point you're doing essentially the same thing you create straight lines okay and then you uh, would select this guy go to the um, the what do they call this just so I'm using the right terminology this is the control point editor tool C is the hotkey okay so then you can drag these points around and and then later you could add a material and color it and all the rest however frankly I'd rather do the drawing in Inkscape it's it's faster and easier and all the rest so if I take this uh, SVG file and just drag it into a column in OpenTunes what OpenTunes does is is a little funky with the art admittedly okay that's a little funky. That's not quite what I saw in Inkscape. But the thing that's cool about it is the entire palette of colors based on the colors in the SVG file are automatically added to the palette, which is actually quite cool. So now I don't know if I can really recover or fix this. Um, frankly, I'm, there's something I've never tried before, but I'm going to actually grab this, the ping file I created, drag it in here. Now it looks correct. 
Um, gosh, it would be cool if I could access that other palette, but I can't. So anyway, that's one of the things about OpenTunes that's cool is by importing an SVG, um, you can have an instant palette. Um, you know, arguably it's also cool that uh, even though you have to do some fix-up work, obviously here, um, I'm assuming that if I use like the bucket fill tool or something like that, you know, that it will in fact work. Um, gosh, folks, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Let me see. Oh, yep, it does work. Okay. So I can actually go through and sort of fix things, but obviously the SVG imports a little winky. So how is this useful? Well, frankly, in my opinion, it's useful because if you're going to use OpenTunes, why not go ahead and create your color palettes, uh, maybe in Inkscape, and save them as a SVG file, and you can instantly drag and drop them into any project. Now, how would I do the same thing in Blender? I'm glad you asked. I didn't actually intend to go through all this today, but as long as we're here, let's let's just do it. Okay, if I wanted to, to, to create art in Inkscape and bring it into Blender, here's how I'd do it. I'd, I'd add a plane, tab. I'm getting out of edit strokes mode, by the way. I'm set up. I uh, When I open Blender, I'm always in edit strokes mode right from the get-go. So, so I'm going to take my ping and just drag it to the plane. Okay, there you go. All right, so now it's not exactly just that simple because in my case, I want to go in and I have a default uh, material. Uh, what did I just hit? I meant to hit F7. Oh, yeah, and then I want to go to the materials. And my default material is um, it's, it's, it uses face textures and face textures alpha, but it also is shadeless. So that means it's going to render flat and it's going to look good in a... Um, OpenGL preview. In fact, if I hit only render and nothing selected, I can hit F10, which I have set up as a hotkey. And so now you say, well, that's cool, Dave. You, you, you don't want to use the grease pencil. Okay. Now I could use the grease pencil here. What if I wanted to animate the guy's mouth? Well, what I could do is I'm going to do a couple of really quick things. Make sure that my cursor is set to the center of my view. Yeah, it is. Okay. Okay, well, what I could do here if I wanted to do some grease pencil animation is take this material, make sure it's that color, okay, and then just draw a little patch around here, and now I can go ahead and um, animate this guy's mouth, you know, here in Blender. Okay. So now you say, oh, that's kind of cool, but um, what if you wanted to deform the mesh uh, that this uh, drawing of this character is mapped to? Well, that's a great question. The way I normally would do it is I would probably come over here to this little window that I have. Um, I would go to my properties, 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 properties and go to my modifiers and I would add a subdivision surface simple I don't want it to I am I, I'm not wanting the smoothing I just I just want to subdivide that okay so I'm gonna subdivide it like four times and then I think this will work I'll apply it okay now there you go if I want to deform it and all the rest here in blender I can do so okay tab out of and and of course you can set up keys for that you could also make the mesh a much higher resolution if you want so it looks smoother okay so another question you might be asking is well what if I want to create art using the polyline tool the way you did in Inkscape because that looked that looked pretty efficient so I'm gonna kill this I'm gonna actually go into edit strokes mode select all and kill that okay this is actually a technique that's quite useful. You hit, instead of drawing with the grease pencil, and by the way, I'm going to once again make sure my cursor is at the center. Um, the way you would do that if you don't have a hotkey set up like I do is you go Shift S and then cursor to center. I just happen to use the grease pencil. I, I just create everything at center and then later if I parent it to an empty or whatever, I can move it around in space. But Okay, so this is what I would do. If I wanted to emulate the same drawing technique I used in Inkscape a minute ago, what I would do is I would hit Control D 
and then I would just draw these points okay and then in my case well I've got a hotkey set up for this but I'll show you the long way to do it is hit A to select all points and then hit W to subdivide 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 and now use your smoothing tool to maybe smooth out these edges uh, you know use your magnet tool to kind of whip this into shape the way you want okay so that's kind of the same drawing technique and I think it it's kind of cool because it allows somebody who maybe isn't the greatest artist in the world to um, it, or who may not have a tablet actually to go ahead and just draw with their mouse and you know develop their character that way and and you can do that you know it's it's a pretty fast way to work actually um, I'm gonna select linked subdivide 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 and again blah 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 and then I'm gonna I've got a hotkey set up for this too so that I move these points to the current selected color which is white and so now as you can see I'm sort of creating an eye select linked I'm gonna turn off the proportional editing tool by hitting the O key I'm gonna go shift delete to clone this I'm gonna go S key to size on the X key the X axis negative one which flips it perfectly okay move this over like this and now maybe I'll just use my regular oops I don't want to do that I want to have black ink use my regular drawing tool to whoa, what's going on here oh it's blenders probably acting a little bit slow because of the screencast software that's running in the background so all right and I probably want to move this over to a different color uh, and then fix that color to something like I did before that's more muted uh, blah 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 something like that so again you can you can sort of use this uh, technique of um, drawing simple shapes with the polyline tool which is again is control D in the grease pencil and then go ahead and uh, just subdivide and smooth and drag them around uh, what was there was one other thing I wanted to point out oh yeah this is something I sort of stumbled on and didn't even realize you could do is notice with your proportional editing tool the default is to proportional edit projected 2d that means anything I click and drag anything that is in the what blender sees as a 2d projection of that flat space any points will be influenced by the proportional editing tool okay so if I hit the G key and start moving things around any any pixels that are in range will be affected I gotta tell you normally that's not what I prefer normally you want connected and what connected does is it only manipulates points from the uh, shape that you grabbed a hold of okay so that is a little more controllable and then later uh, where the projected 2d can come in really handy is something like this I'm gonna go select linked okay and watch what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna go shift D to duplicate that then I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna fill that with black ink I'm gonna hit page down a couple times so it's in the background and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn proportional editing off for a minute and I'm gonna size this up just a little bit and rotate it just a little bit okay and when I render this you'll see that it gives you sort of the, the cartoon network type of outline okay I mean you can call it what you want that's what I'm gonna call it today okay so now if I use projected 2d it's kind of useful because now the um if I need to manipulate this the uh, what's going on here um hold on folks I think I got something strange happening yes okay Ah, oh, okay um yeah that was strange apparently the the points of the flesh tone shape were actually selected in the background uh, so that was what was causing that weirdness so now if I use proportional editing with uh, projected 2d my point was that uh, the the outline and the overall shape stay together now you say well Dave that's okay but the problem is you're also getting some you're also affecting some points in this eye shape that you didn't want okay no problem what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select the eye shape which is and it's good practice to keep things separated in layers until you really want them 
you know, together anyway. So I'm going to hit uh, the M key to move, and I'm going to move those to a new layer. Okay. And then what I'm going to do, I need to go back here to my 3D view and open back up my list of layers. And what I'm going to do is just lock that layer. I'm lock this is the layer I just created that I stuck the eyes in. So now, there because that layer is locked, um, it's not going to be affected by this uh, activity with the proportional editing tool. So, okay. So what did we cover? How to draw quickly interesting characters in Inkscape. How to oh that's the wrong thing. How to bring a palette into OpenTunes, which frankly is about the most useless thing I discussed today, but it is somewhat interesting. Um, how would you do, actually, you know what, this palette thing, how would you emulate the same thing in Blender? I'll show you. That you could do the same exact thing in Blender by uh, simply doing this. Let's say I wanted to adjust the colors of this guy based on some other um, art that was done earlier. Okay, the way I would do that is I'd go ahead and add a plane to my scene. I'm going to size it down. Okay. Take the art that's interesting to me, which obviously this is going to have some of the same colors, but I'm trying to work fast here. Okay. Okay. So now I say, I want this flesh tone to match this flesh tone. Well, that's easy. I'm just going to go here to my skin tone and use the eyedropper tool. Click on this picture and boom. Okay, so you can use an image that you created as kind of a source for all the colors that you want. Okay, so if I wanted these eyes to be this stupid green looking color, I could do that by just going here to the eyes and eyedropper on here. When I got everything the way I want, I can just delete that source picture back out of the, out of the scene. So anyway, that's it for now. My main purpose today was to demonstrate the whole thing with... Um, uh, the SVG dragged into OpenTunes just so I can, you know, say that OpenTunes is not all bad. <laughs> it's actually quite good in a lot of ways. I just, the, the more, the deeper I go, the more I keep coming back to Blender and the Grease Pencil as a more flexible and powerful tool overall than what I'm seeing with OpenTunes. But hey, I mean, OpenTunes has a great pedigree. Apparently they did Futurama with it. So that's, uh, so, you know, that's pretty respectable. So anyway, that's it for now.